The continuing spike in COVID-19 cases is our top story in your Barbados Today Evening News update for Tuesday, April 5. So glad you could join us. COVID-19 cases are rising in Barbados and authorities suggest the spike is likely due to the BA2 Omicron subvariant. At a national COVID-19 update this evening, Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Anton Bess delivered the news as he gave a breakdown of the numbers. In the last eight days, we've diagnosed approximately 2,000 infections and the reproductive number is 1.5, which simply means that one infected case can lead to 1.5 cases or two persons who are infected can lead to three. So it is growing. And when the R effective is 1.0, or rather when it is less than 1.0, it is when you have control of the outbreak and it cannot grow. The minister would have also mentioned that the doubling rate is approximately three to 4.5 days. Once again, these are all indicators signaling that there is growth of the epidemic. Samples have been sent to the Trinidad-based Caribbean Public Health Agency to confirm the new subvariant. Since January of this year, our, we, we knew that our epidemic was being driven by Omicron, a more transmissible yet milder variant of COVID. And this is in keeping with what we were seeing globally. We are preparing to send samples to the CARFA labs in Trinidad for genomic testing to determine if the BA2 subvariant of COVID is at play, but we can reasonably assume that BA2 subvariant is here and is circulating in Barbados. The Omicron variant is the most dominant variant circulating globally and the BA2 variant has been taken over in the last four to six weeks. It is a subvariant of COVID, not a distinct variant from, um, sorry, it's a subvariant of Omicron. It is not a distinct variant of concern. The increase in cases has resulted in more admissions at the Harrison's Point facility. Head of isolation facilities, Dr. Corey Ford, said there are 75 people, 10 of whom are in primary isolation. He expressed concern about patients presenting themselves for treatment. So if we look at the majority of those admissions over this period of time, the majority of those individuals that I mentioned are actually people who are asthmatic and have gotten asthmatic attacks in the presence of COVID. And it's with that that I would like to encourage all of those, certainly who are in the community, who are asthmatics and who have, missed, have symptoms of COVID or have COVID, to present themselves very early to our system. What does that mean? And to just spell it out for you very clearly. If you feel unwell and you have COVID, I'm asking you to present yourself um, through the operation center um, to our assessment centers. Those two assessment centers still remain um, at the 4-H facility in Belleville and the facility uh, at the Barbados Workers Union um, College in St. Philip. You can present yourself through the Operations Center for assessment and I'm really encouraging because people um, from what we're seeing, especially some of the younger ones, are presenting to the facility a bit late after four or five days of symptoms and then obviously that's a struggle for us. I think that if you present early it puts yourself in a better position to do better. So I want to first encourage you in that. I want to, to, to talk to Barbados today on the last point when it comes to isolation. And that really is to those people who are in households of elderly people. And there I go again. One of the things I com I'm continuing to see, which I'm very unhappy with, is the, um, the elderly persons who are presented who are unvaccinated. If you have old granny, grandfather, your grandma, your neighbor next door, you know they're not vaccinated. Um, try to get them vaccinated. And if they've been vaccinated and they had their two shots, make sure that they go and get boosted. I think. Meanwhile, Dr. Adana Grandison, consultant manager of the Home Quarantine Program, reported that there were currently just over 2,000 people in home isolation. She noted that most patients had little to no symptoms, referred to as the green category, but there's been an increasing number of patients in the yellow category. That's where patients experience mild to moderate symptoms. She stressed the need for vaccination. I know a lot of persons say, well, I'm not going to get vaccinated simply because if I get infected, if I get sick, I'll get better. Um, I'm relatively healthy. But it's not just acute COVID that we're thinking about. It's also the quality of life, possibly with the, the development of long COVID. And so in terms of wanting to have a better quality of life, this vaccine is not only helping you in terms of mitigating severe disease for the acute illness, but also decreasing the chances of you possibly developing the complications associated with long COVID. 
People who flaunt the COVID-19 directives, especially those who refuse to wear masks in public spaces, may soon be dealt with by way of a ticketing system. This was revealed by Minister of Health and Wellness Ian Gooden Edgel this evening, who said he intends to have discussions with Attorney General Dale Marshall on the possibility of moving in that direction. We are aware of the concerns regarding face masks, but masks are still highly recommended and effective in reducing the impact of COVID. The Ministry of Health and Wellness, through its health promotion officer and volunteers, will be increasing the distribution of masks in the community. Concerns have been raised about the continued use of prosecutions and the court system to deal with what some consider to be relatively minor breaches of the COVID directive. Other jurisdictions have been using ticketing systems as a quick and effective means of punishing individuals who break the rules. We will therefore discuss with the Attorney General how a ticketing system could be implemented in Barbados to deal with such things as the failure to wear masks in a public space and other similar breaches. With Barbados seeing an increased number of positive COVID-19 cases, the health minister urged the public to continue to wear their masks and to get vaccinated and boosted. Vaccinations and boosting are still the most effective prevention strategies to prevent against severe illness, hospitalization and death. Based on the data and other factors I have presented, we do not regard this new situation as a setback. Rather, the possibility of such an occurrence has been long anticipated and planned for, given that such events are a natural part of the internal beh behavior of viruses. As I've said before, all indications are that we will have to continue to live, work, and socialize safely in this COVID-19 environment, closely following the established and proven protocols. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, the Caribbean Examination Council launched its digital intelligence gateway platform today. CSC Chairman Professor Sir Hilary Beckles believes it will inform decision-making for educational policy and development. Chairman of the Caribbean Examinations Council, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, said the platform will give ministries of education in the region self-service access to the information they may require. This information can include statistics on ESBAs, registrations and results. There is also a category for CXC Statistical Digest. As the platform is rolled out, new categories can be added based on the needs of stakeholders. He said the gateway represents the digital transformation of the Council's examinations performance data and is designed to provide stakeholders with access to relevant and meaningful information for research policy development and educational impact assessment. On the international scene, Canada should prepare for the rapid deployment of a second COVID-19 booster program over the coming weeks, prioritizing elderly adults and residents of long-term care or other congregate settings. The National Advisory Committee on Immunization, NACI, is now recommending those who are over the age of 80 or long-term care residents get prioritized for their second booster doses six months after their first. The advisory body adds it could soon expand the recommendation to include Canadians over 70. In the U.S., second boosters are already approved for those 50 plus. Experts say for the average person, three doses provides sufficient protection. It will add a little bit to your protection, but essentially the, the idea of, uh, of abandoning all other things and, and rushing out there and getting your fourth shot, that's not so important right now. Let's leave the fourth shot to those people who really need it. 
Federal officials say they are reviewing recommendations for adults under 50 with guidance to be released in the coming weeks. Immunocompromised Canadians are already recommended to get their fourth shots. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.